Welcome to Faith Revival Place International. I'm your host, Minister M.G. Mays. Let us begin in prayer. We thank you, Father. We praise you for all that you do for our lives. We thank you, Lord, that uh, you're the supreme of our lives and that we ravel in your salvation. We, we thank you for your salvation, that you saved our souls from the... Uh, the things of this world you saved our souls and our hearts our mind our spirit from all these things that are not good for us father but now it's for us to look at the facts look at the facts after we're saved look at the facts that about how we're saved and where we're going with you and how we need to be flowing with the spirit of god and, and remember it where we used to be and where you're making us to now. And it's all because of your saving power of our lives. And Father, I pray that each one of us will be bold in the spirit to, to speak to others about the salvation message. So let us review this message. Let us understand the facts on it and we thank you father we praise you in Yeshua Jesus name amen today's sermon is called born again the facts born again the facts and so let us begin by go to Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 30 through 36 let us go there praise the Lord and the word of God says, Hear the day it are coming, says Yahweh, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, which makes up the twelve tribes of Israel, which today is the church and the synagogues. It will not be like the coming I made with your fathers on the day I took them by their hand and brought them out of the land of Egypt. You gotta remember where I came from so now that we can revel and thank the Lord for where we are now. Because they, for their part, of uh, violated my covenant even through I for my part was a husband to them, says Yahweh. For this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel, the twelve tribes of Israel. After those days, says Yahweh, I will put my Torah within them and write them on their hearts. So God wants to write his teachings. Good teachings. That's what Torah means. The good teachings on our mind and our heart. And that's the new thing God is doing. Praise the Lord. And I will put their. I will be their God. Elohim. And they will be my people. Praise the Lord. No longer will any of them teach his fellow community member or his brother. No Yahweh, for all who know me, for, for the least of them to the greater, because I will forgive their wickedness and remember their sin no more. How can you forgive their wickedness and remember their sin no more? Unless he's going to make them born again. Just like the word means. Born again. It means you're born again. You're born another time. But this time through the spirit. Amen. This is what Yahweh says. Who gives the sun light for the day. Who ordains the laws for the moon and stars to provide light for the night, for stirring up the seas until the waves roar. Yahweh Tazat is his name. 
And again, Yahweh means power of a, a light connected to um, no power cell power connected to light connected to all things. And Tazat means the uh, Lord of, of of the heavenly armies, host. Uh, Host of the armies, I'm sorry, host of the armies. So all together, when it says Yahweh Tzad, it's saying uh, power connected to light, connected to the, the hosts of the heavenly armies is his name. If these laws leave my presence, says Yahweh, then... The offspring of Israel, which is the twelve tribes of Israel, which today is called the Church, or the uh, the Jews, or or, uh, or synagogue, and then you have people still in the world that are part of the tribe, twelve tribes that we need to reach out to, and then you get the wild seed, which is the Arabs, because we all came from the seed of Abraham, not just spiritually, but naturally. And we only become that spiritually inclined to what happened to Abraham is when we accept the Mashiach, the Messiah, as your Lord and Savior, Jesus. Then the offspring of Israel will be stopped being a nation in my presence forever. This is what Yahweh says. If this what it, this is what Yahweh says. If the sky above above can be measured and the foundations of the earth be phantomed then I will reject all the offspring of Israel for all that they have done says Yahweh and so basically there's no way to measure the sky because the sky is 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 not a physical object first of all and a phys uh, anything that's non-physical that you can't touch in our realm can't be measured. You see what I'm saying? And so that's why God said that because He said He will be with the twelve tribes of Israel forever and evermore, which makes up the church and the Jews of today. And then you got a lot of them still in the world. That we need to reach out and we got the wild seed. So it's pretty much the whole earth of today's world. The, their world of what we're reading in Jeremiah wasn't that way. But now that scripture has been fulfilled where it says to Abraham, Abraham, look at the skies of the sky, look at this the, the sand of this and this and the sea. Can you number them? No. You'll have as many as that you can see. And you can't count the stars in the sky because they there's there's an endless number of the stars in the sky and and the sand of the sea. Just one beach can have so many things in it. You can't even phantom how much is there. And he was referring to the fact that the twelve tribes of Israel, including the wild sea, the Arabs, would dominate the whole earth someday. And, and guess what? We do. The 12 tribes of Israel make up over 80%. And then you got the Arabs and the other wild offshoots that Abraham did also out there. So we'll, so basically the whole earth is from the bosom of Abraham, literally. And the natural. But spiritually, we get inclined to what the, what happened with him when we were born again. Because that was lost... Uh, because of everybody pretty much betrayed God spiritually. And the only way to bring us back spiritually, and well, and well as the, the natural roots that we have with the Lord and we don't realize, is through the born-again state of what Yeshua, the Messiah, Yahweh says, the image of Yahweh, did on the cross of Calvary. And so now that you can see how much he loves you, 12 tribes of Israel, and wild seed, the Arabs, the bosom of Abraham, O earth, of today, 
you are very much loved by God, but he cannot stand sin. He cannot stand people doing things the devil's way, like they are. And he must have people repent and turn from their wicked ways and turn to the Lord of hosts who loves them. So let us go on now. Now let us look forward. Let's go to John chapter 3, verse 9 through 21. And boy, uh, you know, it's, it's wonderfully read this way. So I encourage you rabbis and your pastors and of all sorts to read it this way to your congregation. So let us turn over there. Because it really hits home. It really does. I mean, it's beautifully read when you read, read it this way. So let us read. And the word of God says, Nic Nic Nicodema replied, Now can this happen? Yeshua said to him, You hold the office of teacher in Israel, and you don't know this? Yes, indeed, I tell you that, that we speak about, we know what we give evidence of, we have seen, but people don't accept our evidence. And if, if people don't believe in, in me, then I tell you about the things of the world. How will you believe in me when I tell you about the things of heaven? No one has gone up to into heaven. There is only the uh, one who has come down from heaven. The incarnate Son of, of of God, just as Mo, Moshe lifted up the serpent in the desert. So much, so much that the Son of God be lifted up, so that. Everyone who trusts in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only unquenched son, so that anyone who trusts in him may have eternal life, instead of being utterly destroyed. For God did not send the the unquenched son into the world to judge the world, but rather so that through him the world might be saved. Through those who trust in him are not judged. Those who do not trust in him have been judged already. So those that think they can get to heaven by works and and not be and not be saved are already judged. You must be saved. There are works to do in the kingdom of God, but you're not. The works do not make you saved, though. In that they have not trusted in the one who is God Elohim, only a quint's son. Now this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, but people love darkness rather than light. Why? Because their actions are wicked. For anyone who does evil things hates the light and avoids it, so his actions won't be exposed. But anyone who does what is true comes to the light, so that all might may see that his actions are accomplished through God Elohim. Amen. So we are people of the light. When we're born again, we're of the light. And those that are of darkness are of darkness. Those the people that are living in sin are in darkness. But those that are born again are the people of light. I'm not talking about natural light at all. I'm talking about a spiritual light that's on our lives. It's called the Holy Spirit. That's the light that I'm talking about.
The darkness that's in the world is Satan, but the light of God is the Holy Spirit that's really Yahweh's Spirit, just like the physical part, which is Jesus, is the physical part of Yahweh. Because you can't separate God from itself from being who it is as God. But it has three parts, a body, soul, and a spirit of God, which is very presently in the Bible, as you can see. And that's where we get our image and likeness from, from God. Because he has a spirit, soul, and a body. Therefore, we have a spirit, soul, and a body. And therefore, our motions, the godly ones that are further the spirit, that are natural in us, but we got to let them out and we got to train them through the Holy Spirit. And that's part of being born again in the first place. Amen. It's allowing that light, allowing the fruits of the spirit to be pro-dominated in us. And all these negative, positive things of this world, saying goodbye to them. And being that light of the world that God has called us to be. Amen. I mean, this should excite you. We all were like Nicodemus at one point. And we all were wondering about things. And wondering is a good thing when you're you're trying to get to the results of being born again. Amen. Or going to the further extent. Amen. So we need to get a hold of the Nicodemus of the world. And tell them the facts of being born again. So now while we're thinking about these things, let us go to... Ezekiel, the prophet, the book of the prophets, Ezekiel, chapter 11, verse 13 through 21. Let's go there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Praise the Lord. Let us read. And as I was prophesying to... Uh, uh, Pelatia, the son of uh, uh, Bern Berna, died. I fell down on my face and cried out, O oh, Yahweh Elohim, are you going to destroy completely those of Israel who are left? And the word of Yahweh came to me. Human being, it is to your kinsmen, your brothers and sisters, you, your relatives, and those, the house of Israel, 12 tribes of Israel, that the people live in Jerusalem have said, Get away from Yahweh. This land has been given to a, a possessor. Therefore, says Yahweh Elohim, says this, True. I removed them far away from the nations. I scattered them away among the countries. And nevertheless, I have been a little sanctuary for them in the countries uh, to which they have gone. Therefore, says Yahweh, Elohim says this, I have gathered you from the peoples and collected you from the countries where you have been scattered. And I will give the land of Israel to you. And then they will go there and remove all the loathsome things and detestable practices. And I will give them unity of heart. And I will put a new spirit among them. So... I will remove them, their, their body and their hearts of stones and give them a heart of flesh so that they will live by my regulations and obey my rulings and actions by them. And then they will be my people and I will be their God Elohim. But as for those whose hearts go after the hearts of loathsome things 
and and this uh despiteful practices i will bring the the condemnations their way of their own heads says yahweh elohim right here he's saying about lukewarmness he's saying those that do the practices of the world but yet have a form of godliness god will end them someday if they don't change their ways so we must be born again we must take that new spirit in us that the only the holy spirit can bring in us amen so i say unto you church i say unto you jews repent this day and be born again if you're not and Tell the facts to others, amen, about being born again. So let us go now to John chapter 1, verse 12 through 14. You can't hold back about the being born again. You must share with others. You must share with others the evidence of being born again, amen. But as to as many as did receive him, to those who put their trust in, in this person and power, he gave the right to become children of God of Elohim, not because of their bloodline, physically, impulse, or human intent, but because of God Elohim. The word became a human being and lived with us. And we saw the Shekinah, the Shekinah of the Father's only uh, Son, the Shekinah. So the Holy Spirit, Amen, was became became flesh and dwelt with mankind. Yeshua Hamashiach, Jesus, full of grace and truth, Amen. So we are called God's children once again. Amen? By being born again, we lost it. Twelve tribes of Israel, which makes up the church and the Jews. You once lost it, but now you found it and, and, and got renewed and became God's children once again. Praise the Lord. Through what Mashiach, the Messiah, did on the cross, which is the Holy Spirit. This is why... You must reverent the Holy Spirit. Because if you don't reverent the Holy Spirit, you're not going to reverent any other part of God. Because God is one. Whether you talk about the spirit or the physical or the soul part of God. So let us go to Romans chapter 8, verse 14 through 17. Amen. So I hope this is ministering to you. I know it is. And you, you must listen to these things. You must tell others about our Savior, Lord. How beautiful He is. How God is a beautiful God. And He sent His, His salvation to us all. We must not forget it ever. We must keep it on our hearts all the time. How beautiful our God is. Don't be callous. Stay renewed in the Lord of hosts. And those scriptures say, All who are led by God's Spirit are God's sons and daughters. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to bring you back again into fear of the things of this world. On contrary, you receive the Spirit who makes us sons and daughters, and by those powers we cry out, Abba, Source, that is, Dear Father, the Source. The Spirit Himself bears witness with our own Spirit. See, we have a Spirit, and the Holy Spirit, which is God's Spirit, bears with our Spirit. See, we have a Spirit. Let me read it again because there's confusion 
still today about this. And the Bible is clear that we have a spirit. But the spirit of God has to be in control of our spirit, controlling it and making it and maturing it. Let, let's read 16. It's very clear that we have a spirit, soul, and a body. And that's where we got from God as his image and likeness. The spirit himself bears witness with our own spirit. Our own spirit. That we are children of God. And if we are children, then we are also heirs. Heirs of God Elohim. And joint heirs with the Messiah. And this is where... The hallelujah section is saying hallelujah. And provided we are suffering with him in order to be glorified with him. See, this is the part people want to skip, though. we got to, in order to be glorified with him, we have to endure the sufferings of this world. People don't like that. That's not a popular thing. But it's sure popular with the word of God, though. Nobody wants to hear that you have to suffer to be glorified with with our Savior and Lord at the end. What, it, what does it mean by suffering? It means that the world's going to say things about you. It means that you might be persecuted physically even, as well as the mental. And you know what? People don't like to hear this. But you know what? To be glorified at the end, you have to go through things. You have to prove that, yes, I'm, I'm going to go with you, Father. Yes, whatever happens, I am going to stick it out with you. And that's the facts. And we got to give the facts of this salvation, the eternal salvation of God. And make sure it's very clear in our brain, in our hearts. And then make sure it's clear in other people's. And then the loss making sure that they know the facts that salvation is for them as well amen so let us go to romans chapter 5 now verse 1 through 5 you know nobody likes to go through sufferings but god will make us strong when we're weak amen and that's a promise he promises that. So let's lay on his promises and say, Father, without, uh, without you, we're a bunch of cowards. But through your spirit, you make us bold as lions. Amen. So since we have come to be considered righteous, we've been considered righteous by God Elohim because of our trust. So never Never stop trusting in God. Let us continue to have shalom with God Elohim through our Yahweh, Yeshua the Messiah. Also through Him and on the grounds of trust, we have gained uh, access to His grace. Through trusting, we get full access to grace, a, a limited favor. In which we stand, so that let let us boast about the hope of evidence of God's glory, holy weight of heaven, the the glory of heaven. But now only that let us also boast in our troubles. God wants us to boast about our troubles, how he's given us victories, and how we had to struggle sometimes. And sometimes we had tears in, in our homes. Like, wow, how are we ever going to get through these troubles? And the Holy Spirit came through. And we got nothing greater than the testimonies about these things, my, my friends. Because we know that, that troubles produce endurance. And endurance produces character. And God likes to have character put in us. And character produces hope. And hope does not let us down. Because God only loves 
for us has already been poured out in our heart through Arukadash, the spirit of a holy God who has been given to us. And this is where the Amen section says Amen. Because I'm telling you what, I'm telling you what, this is this is this is where we need to be excited because that's where our hopes lie. It's through the troubles that bring us all the way to hope. So the dumb devil and his his ways of making trouble for the Lord's anointed ones, which is all of us. And through the trials, we wind up with God's hope. Amen. And, and then the, everything that's in between of going towards that. So praise the Lord. We need to stay strong. Stay strong. There, and we will have versatile trials, temptations. But be of good cheer. For the Lord of hosts has already overcome all these things. Even our faith. Why would it say even our faith for if we're not having struggles in those things? So let's rely on the prize of our high calling, which is Yeshua Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Yahweh's image. We embrace Him. Amen. So let us go to Romans 6. Verse 1 through 11. And the word of God says, So then we are say, let us, keep, let us keep sinning on that there can be more grace. Heavens forbid. Did you hear that? Heavens forbid. How can we who had died to sin still live in it? Don't you know that those who of us who have been immersed into the Messiah Yeshua have been immersed into his death? Through immersing into the death, we were buried with him. So that just as through the glory of the Father, the Messiah was raised from the dead. Likewise, we too might live a new life. A new start. For if we have been united with him in, in death like this, we also united with him in the resurrection like this. We know that our old self, our old ways, was put to death on the execution stake with him, so that our tile body of our sinful might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin see the world's enslaved to sin you can see that but we don't need to be enslaved to it for though for someone who has died has been cleared from sin now since we died with the messiah we trust circle the word faith or trust knowing trust that we will also live with him and we know that the messiah has been raised from the dead never to die again death has no authority over him for his death was unquenched evidence way consider yourself to be dead to sin, but alive to God Elohim by your union with the Messiah Yeshua. Amen. So we're dead to the things of this world. That's including acting proudly like we're something included in this world. We're not. When we say we're American, we're being of this world again. The word of God says when you're born again, you're a citizen of heaven. How can you be a citizen of two countries? You can't. You're a citizen of heaven. When you're born again, you're a citizen of heaven. So these things of earth 
We are ambassadors down here. That's what the Word of God says. And so, thereby being, we got to tell the facts of being born again and all the beautiful things that lay ahead of being born again for the rest of their lives. Amen. So let us go now to John chapter 15, verse 1 through 8. Praise the Lord. And the word of God says, I am the real vine, and my father is the garden. Every branch which is part of me, but fails to bear fruit, he cuts off. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, so that it may bear more fruit. Right now, because the, the word which I have spoken to you, you are being pruned. Did you hear what, did you hear what our mighty Savior Lord is saying? Through the inspiration of, of, of our brother, the apostle John is saying, it says, every branch that does bear fruit, he is pruned so that it may bear more fruit. Right now, because of the word which I have spoken to you, you are being pruned. Stay united with him. I will, I will with you. For just as the branch can't put forth fruit by itself apart from the vine, so you can't bear fruit apart from me. So stay in the vine. The, the, the roots are, are Yeshua Jesus. You can't go separate out of that. Don't do that, my friends. Stay in the vine of the Lord of hosts. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Those who stay united with me, and I with them, are one with the who bears much fruit. Because apart from me, you can't do anything unless the person remains united with me. He, he is thrown away like the branches and dries up. And such branches are gathered and thrown into the fire. Where they are burnt up, and if you remain united with me, and the words with you, and then ask whatever you want, and it will happen for you, this is how the Father is glorified, and you're bearing much fruit. Did you hear how the Father is glorified? Through you bearing much fruit of the Spirit of God in you, through maturity, amen? This is how you will uh, prove to be a disciple. Amen. It's through bearing much fruit. Fruits of the Spirit of God in you. Through uh, merging yourself in the Word of Jesus from Genesis to Revelation. Yeshua HaMashiach. Our Savior Lord. And this is the point in time. I'm going to ask you my friends. If you do not know the Mashiach. The Messiah. As your Lord and Savior. Today is the day of salvation. It's drawn to you. Today the facts has been laid. For you. So today is the day. Of getting saved. Or getting right with him. If you have something wrong in you. Get saved today. If you. Are lukewarm. Get saved today. In the arms of the Lord. The Lord's arms are out. Stretched. His blood. He palms. That he died on the cross at Calvary. Is reaching out to you. And saying come forth. Who have a heavy lady. For the, there's rest in him. There's, there's the rest of God in him. Are you going to get saved today? Are you going to get right with them? I don't care if you're 120 or 12 years old. It's time to get saved. The facts are the end. Are you ready to be saved? So let us repeat this prayer together with all our hearts. 
and start a fresh start with him today. Dear God Yahweh, I ask you into my spirit, soul, and body as Lord and Savior of my life. Love you very much, Yeshua Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, for all those that prayed that prayer. I ask that the Spirit of God live in them mightily and guide them into spirit and truth of your word. And to the situations that they come in the future, Father, I know that you'd be with them. Thank you, Lord. Congratulations. Welcome to the family of God. I'm so proud of you today. The Lord, most importantly, is proud of you. The angels of God are celebrating. Literally right now. Amen. So let us pray for the sick. And have a among us. But before we do, be baptized. Be baptized in water too. And that symbolizes everything that you did when you were saved just now. Okay, amen. Now I want to pray of the sick. Father, I ask that you touch your lives, including myself. Touch us, Lord, with your scepter of mercy. Cleanse us. Cleanse our bodies from any infirmities, Father. We love you. We cherish you. We thank you. We bow before your throne of grace right now. In Yeshua Jesus' name, amen. Let's end this with the Shalom prayer. Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Wholeness that brings you the peace that passes all understanding be with you. Wholeness. Nothing severed, nothing broken, nothing uh, crashed upon. Shalom. Be with you for now and forever. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.